All right, I'm going to talk about sexual orientation. This is a topic and everyone's freaking out about it. I don't know what side of the thing you're coming from, but I want to say a few things to level everything. I, you know, we're all hearing people talk more and more about this, more and more of our friends and the people in our family and people we care about, people we work with are more into this. See, in the 90s, it's, it's like it was all theory. Like there was this one guy who knew a guy that knew a guy in like another city who knew a guy from another city. And then like that person had things happening or whatever with sexual orientation. And that was that that was our experience. And so now today we actually know people more and more and more. And so our opinions change. Hmm. Think about that. Would you? experience causes us to have a different opinion? Hmm. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. We need experience, not all theory, theory, theory. Now, I've been through this. I've heard it all. I've heard the arguments. I've, I've heard people's pain and their struggles and their concerns. And whatever your particular situation is, where, whatever you're concerned about from whatever side of this, I've probably heard it. And I, I, I get the basic ideas. I, I don't, I'm not going to say I know the specific details for your life. But I'm, I'm not new to this. I'm not forming an opinion late in the game. I've had an opinion about this for 21 years. I'm 39 years old. For over half my life, I've had the same opinion about this. And I've gotten better at talking about it, but I want to tell you why. I don't believe in hating people. You know, th 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 This is on topic, but I'm telling you, I'm not changing the topic. This is important. In order for a society to last, the society has to get along. People are different. In a pure democracy, every single policy, every single law gets voted on by everybody. Nobody has time for anything because everyone's always voting. Fortunately, the United States doesn't require everyone to vote on everything. It's a republic. It's, it's not, it's a democratic republic. It's kind of a hybrid because in a democracy, it's just tyranny of the masses. You get 51% of the people, they can gang up on 49%. Well, that's not fair. Thank the Lord. We don't have a democracy in America. We've got a, a democratic republic where the rights of even one person are protected from the democratic tyranny of everybody else. 99% cannot gang up on 1% or even 99.9, .9, etc. Can't do it because we all treat each other with respect. There, you know, a judge must not try to create law or do what the judge thinks is right. A judge must enforce the law and then let the lawmakers fix it if there's a problem. Now, there's, you know, the law and then you have constitution and then you have b basic justice like human rights, but human rights are not about me telling you what I think you should do. And, and from, from both extremes of the sexual orientation discussion, we've got people trying to tell the other one what to do, what to say. And that's, that's not part of a society that can endure once we have one group of people saying that the other people have to abide by their own morals, you have to abide by my morals, that idea. Once we have that, society decays and falls apart. And then you get another country that comes in and invades and makes it worse for everybody. Whatever you want, whatever, you're not going to get it because the other country is going to come in and, and it's going to be far worse. We've got to get along which means we have to respect each other's differences and not tell each other what to do. And so as part of that, respect for people that are different, they might be, you might think they're wrong and they might actually be wrong, but that's not our concern. The very idea of right and wrong is rooted from the Bible that tells us that we aren't to judge. There is a right and wrong. But we're not the ones who judge that. I, you know, now I can know that I'm on my path, but 
you know, that you've got this Bible idea. Well, God says, da, 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 da. Okay. God also says that you will stand before him and answer for yourself. You will not stand before God and answer for someone else. And there's been a lot of people who say they believe in God and might kind of, but they don't get that part. They think they answer for what someone else does. And that has created a lot of abuse from one side of the sexual orientation opinion. And now there's getting backlash, of course, from the other side of the sexual orientation opinion. So I'm going to go over a few things here. And I'm going to start with uh, what William Glasser uh, said about choice. William Glasser was a shrink. And, and basically, he said, in life, we have our auto reactions. I'm kind of using my own words, really summarizing. This is not a psychology lesson. But he really believed that, that we have behavior. We, we behave kind of like an instinct. Something happens and we react on instinct. Okay. We don't have a choice in our reaction. What we do, you know, immediately, you know, heat of the moment, instant auto react. We don't have a choice in how we feel. But we do have a choice in how we respond. And we have a choice in the things that we think about and dwell on and mull over and let rent space in our minds. The things that we give our mind time to, we have a choice there. You can choose, it might be difficult, but you can to try to change your mind and think about something else. And the things that we think about affect what our behavioral responses will automatically be in the moment, including how we feel. If you think about how sad your life is all the time, then you're going to tend to be sad. Hmm. Big surprise there. Not. Okay. If you count your blessings, my grandmother always said this, count your blessings. If you count your blessings, you might just be happier and people might like being around you more because you're not a depressing rain cloud and more happy things might happen to you. Huh. We have... more than 0% choice of our lives where we are. We can't control everything. It's, um, it's less than 100%. And this is a little man here in the middle. I just thought of that idea right now. Oh my goodness, that's all backwards. Don't tell anyone. I need to erase this. We have less. See, I make mistakes. We all do. There's a man in the middle. There's 0% and then there's us and then there's 100%. We have less than 100% choice of where we are. And we have more than 0% choice. Our conversations are not a waste. When you talk to someone, you are not wasting your time. Maybe you are some, but not fully. If we have 0% effect of where we are in life, then there isn't a point in talking to anybody. There isn't a point in, in trying to change the law for human rights or whatever, because you have 0% effect on your life anyway. It doesn't make a difference because you're not responsible at all for where you are if we have 0% choice in life. But that's not true. Trying to change the law is useful. Trying to talk to somebody else about something is useful because you can make more than 0% difference of where you are in life. You can't make 100% difference. We're somewhere in the middle. And according to William Glasser, the things we choose affect our auto behaviors. All right. Let's go with, okay, it's, 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 there we go. Let's talk about taste. Um, I'm going to say food. I'm going to try to keep this kid friendly. So I'm going to call it orientation. Um, I'm going to even say sports. I'm going to say arts. 
even skills. Maybe. But let's start at the top with food. Coffee is an acquired taste. So are beer and whiskey. Uh, maybe you don't like any of the above. That's because you haven't acquired the taste. Maybe that's a good thing. Some people think they're unhealthy. Other research says that people who drink lots of coffee are less prone to get cancer. Uh, but, I, you know, how research goes. I, I, I'm not trying to morally judge these things. I'm simply stating that our tastes are acquired for food and for a lot of other things. If you grew up playing basketball as a kid, guess what? You might like basketball because you're used to it. If you've never played basketball, you're not going to grow up loving it. Yeah, and, uh, we'll go to arts here. I want to add a little extra one here, and I want to say something about music. You know the number one way to become a good jazz musician? Listen to jazz. I mean, the number one way to become good at blues or boogie-woogie is to listen to blues or boogie-woogie, respectively. You're not going to get good at blues listening to boogie-woogie only, and vice versa. The things that, that we try and do again and again, we kind of sort of grow accustomed to them. This is why McDonald's works as a franchising model. Because back in the day anyway, every McDonald's you stop by, you know where the bathroom is, right? It's right, it's around the corner. It's, it's over at, as you're looking, it's, it's, on, it's on your right. Because you're familiar with it, and that's why it worked. It wasn't about the quality of the food. It's about the familiarity. We gravitate to things we're familiar with. Now, <clears throat> sexual orientation is, um, is more than 0% relevant to this. More than zero. When you're sitting there in bed at night wishing you had more to grab than a pillow or uh, whatever, whoever is next to you, and you're dwelling on it and dwelling on it and dwelling on it, you might be training your sexual orientation tastes by renting space in your mind. Uh, when you're playing with yourself, uh, you have control of what you think about. And you might be more than zero affecting what your preferences will become after you develop the habit of what you think about. Okay. Um, it's related. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop there on this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that as a point. There's a lot that could be said. My only point is it's more than zero. Um... About, I'm going to say this, I'm going to just write self here, and I'm going to write a capital M. If you're a kid, that means maturity. <clears throat> Playing with ourselves is generally a bad idea. Um, in, in Asian... East Asian Chinese medicine and Kung Fu, my, my Kung Fu master always says to the guys, uh, your trouble in class today is that you have too much shooting. Uh, you're shooting in every direction as often as you can, and you don't have any energy left because you've shot it all away down the toilet. And uh, he, he says, um, once every two weeks at most. Uh, if, when, when you're married, um, you need to conserve your energy. That has a lot of energy, uses a lot of salt. It takes your body more energy to make that stuff than it takes for your body to make blood. It's, it's just, I don't know, the energy signature the science people or whatever, they say that its energy signature is the highest of any precious bodily fluid. Hashtag Dr. Strangelove. So, um, generally speaking, playing with yourself is a massive waste of energy. Uh, I'm going to put up a term here, fungible. You love my terrible handwriting? Fungible. Uh, dollars are fungible. Uh, barrels of oil are fungible. Uh, 95 octane fuel is fungible, so is 92. 
Uh, it, it doesn't matter which dollar you give to somebody. All dollars might as well be equal. It's fungible. Energy is fungible, your energy. And when you expend your energy on uh, self capital M um, <clears throat> shooting, uh, you have squandered your energy that you could use to be more industrious, which, you know, like creating, working, producing something, making money um, on, on art, uh, skills, exercise, being a happy, upbeat person that others want to be around. I'm telling you, if you don't shoot your energy down the drain, you are going to have better luck everywhere in life. Believe me, trust me. Um, and it, it, this applies to men and women both in its own respective ways. It, it, conserve your energy. It, it, uh, Kung Fu master will say, don't shoot too much. Chinese medicine, they'll say that that's your power. Don't let your power go easily. It's a big deal. All right. So just if, if you have less of this, then you're not thinking about your, your, <clears throat> your appetite and hunger so much. And so it might not be as big of a deal if you're not doing this to yourself eight times a day. Now, um, I'm going to call something else. I'm going to move on. Emotional hunger. Emotional hunger. Have you noticed that I write my A's differently at different points in the sentence? Emotional hunger for companionship. We'll call it companionship. Emotional hunger for companionship. Um, part of, I, full disclosure here, I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I'm not trying to get numbers. I don't go to a Sunday morning churchy thing and I don't feel better for getting new recruits. Full disclosure, I've been raised Christian. I have a bachelor's degree in Bible. So many Bible credits, I could add math and science and have two bachelor's degrees and both of them still be in Bible. And that's what I know very well. And in the Bible, the Bible teaching, I don't mean religion, I mean Bible teaching. There are two things that are very, very celebrated. One is having children in marriage, in monogamous marriage where the community knew and recognized, okay, you two are a thing now and you're together. And now they're stuck in, in, I always say covenant is a promise with a dance. You make a promise and you do a little dance to make sure everybody knows, you, you know, your ceremony, wedding ceremony is a covenant. It's a promise with a little dance. And so, so you've done the dance, you have witnesses and you're in relationship and you're stuck together now for life or none of us are happy with you. You, you, you made a decision and you're going to go there and now you're going to start having children. Romance is about children. Romance. Equals, I'm going to say family. We've got parents, we've got children. Uh, some, try to follow me on this. If you're not a Bible person, just, just try to follow me on this. The book of Ruth is oftentimes described as a love story. All right, it is. Widow, foreigner, hard life. I've been a foreigner in Taiwan 11 years. I know foreigner life. Uh, her her late husband's uh, cousin uh, marries her, and it, and it solves her life problems because now she can be in a family. Yes, there's love and romance there. It took an awful lot of love, um, but it wasn't just having another romantic lover that fixed her problems. She could be part of a family now. And at the end of the book of Ruth, her son is Obed. And Obed's son is Jesse. Not me, not me, Jesse. And Jesse's son was King David, the, the little boy that slew Goliath. 
that was the king. And Jesus is a descendant of David and Jesse, Obed, and Ruth. So it's my point here is that it's it's not it's not just a story about love. It's also about a family tree that branches out in, in a line. It, you know, romance is about family. Everyone's asking the question, where am I going to find a person that I'm going to be with? Yeah, okay, that's a question about producing children. In fact, I'll even go back to what a lot of the psychologists say. Sex is about survival because it's, it's, the, it's the perpetuation of the species. And one of the big issues, we've got the fertility rate. For the fertility rate. Uh, you know, Catholics and Muslims have a good fertility rate. Muslims more. And it's not good to have the world dominated by just one of these cultures. And our Western culture has totally just, they, our Western culture just totally separated romance from all the rest, which means we're going to go extinct. Now, for those of you that don't believe in God and you really believe in Darwin, let's say, not necessarily there's only those two, but let's just say, uh, which side of this line is Darwin on? You know, I, I here, here we've got this line here. They should be the same. But in our American thinking, especially, maybe a little bit in Europe, but especially in American thinking, guess what? Darwin is on the same side as God on this. We need family and parents and children and a fertility rate in order to survive. And in both, and I'm going to say the God specifically, I'm not going to be an expert in other religions. I'm just, I'm not saying others are right or wrong. I'm just saying I know what I know, what I've been trained in. I'm going to put a little note here, Bible. If there's carryover to your God, if it's not the God of the, the, the New and Old Testament or maybe Apocrypha, then uh, you, you be the judge of that up or down. But the, the God of the Bible, that you know, the Bible everybody gets beat up with, the God of that particular book, romance is about family. But there is one other thing where Darwin and God don't agree. The God of the Bible. I, I don't want to waste time repeating that big long phrase. You know what I mean. We've also got celibacy, or we'll say singleness. The Bible celebrates people that are not married and they stay single their whole lives. They're incredibly happy. Um, it's, it's in the New Testament, it's in the Old Testament. Being single can empower, I'm single, I'm 39 years old, I'm single, I've been my whole life, and I've got time to sit and think about these things, and I've got time to create new ways to teach people, and I've got time to write books, and I've, I've got time for things, to figure things out. I have so many parents that come to me and ask me how to have a breakthrough with their children, and I can supply them with an answer, kind of. I don't know 24-7 parenting, but I know uh, child rearing, I know uh, working with different kids. I know what happens in different families because I've been going into different homes for 25 years. What, you know, what, 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 in whatever the topic is, whether it's piano or whether it's trying to do, do computers or have a, a breakthrough in academics or something, I just, I've been doing that. And I've seen what works in different families. I have time for that because I don't have a wife or children. And so because of that, the knowledge that I get, I can share with the people that do have, uh, they're, they're in a marriage and they've got children. I can share that with them and help them kind of keep stuff sort of organized and stay afloat. I don't know everything, but I know more in some areas that's helpful to the people that, that are living that. It's very important. I can't talk about 24-7 parenting because I haven't done it. Experience, remember I said that in the beginning? The singleness is celebrated in the Bible, and, and I would almost argue maybe Darwin could accept that, maybe. I'm going to put a little line here on this one if there's a, a question mark on this line. Because 
by having some people who devote themselves to certain things, everybody else that's producing children can have the other person come along and maybe give them some coaching pointers on some things. So I, you know, I don't know, you know, you had the, the medicine man or, you know, the shaman or whatever in, in, in a lot of indigenous Aborigine tribes. Um, you know, you, you've got to have, you've, there's a role for singleness in all this. Now, There's another, I'm going to draw it kind of funky because it's, it's just, it, it, I want to distinguish this line from the others here. It wasn't in this discussion until especially the last 20 years. People have been talking about it kind of, but it hasn't been mainstream throughout the whole world discussion. Miley Annapolis says, you know, sexual orientation has been around for, for thousands of years. All right, but not all over the world. This is new. We've got, um, I'm just going to say orientation, orientation, uh, views. People used to not really have much of an opinion about that. Now we've got views and opinions about that. Um, I've heard a number of, we'll say homosexual Christians saying that they want to have companionship. I don't want to be alone. I, I, I don't want to be alone the rest of my life. And, and I've, I've been through this, uh, this conversation uh, with, you know, more than one person. And, um, all right. But the Bible doesn't celebrate same-sex companionship. It, 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 that's not there. So, so... If you want to go there, you don't need the Bible. That's fine. It's, it's totally fine. Um, I, I don't I don't know why people would want to grab the Bible that celebrates singleness and 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 romance as being part of family when they want to go do something other than that. What, if this is what you want to, if you want to have a different other new opinion over here, then you don't need the things on this side. You, you know, companionship is actually kind of what all this is about here. Well, see, I, you know, the argument for companionship and singleness is that there's kind of, an, of a different type of companion to everyone in the world because they're, they're more free. I, I, I don't get that. I don't, I don't, I don't not, I do not identify with people that want to carry the Bible everywhere they go. When, when the Bible says, no, you're either, you're either married in a way that you can produce a family on your own, not, not biological, not GMO children, not test tube babies. We hate GMO food. Why would we want GMO children? I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an all natural man all the way. So I, we don't want people that, 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 that easily get sick and stuff and are unhealthy because we did test tube babies. Natural biology, Darwinian children, the natural way, the way that survived for billions and billions of years of evolution, supposedly in their view, or in the Bible science view, 10,000 at most, 6,000 for human history, whatever. I'm all about biology. But if, if you don't want to do this, then be single and love it. That's the Bible's perspective. You can be single and love it. If you don't want those, then you don't need the Bible. It's okay. It's okay if you don't, if you don't want the ideas the Bible teaches. That's, that's fine. We don't have to impose our morals on people. What's this obsession with trying to be over here other than Bible and then say your Bible? What's the obsession with this? Why are people so stuck on thinking that they have to have the Bible? Unless deep down someone believes that the Bible is right and they're actually just not willing to follow everything that they believe is right. But that's another discussion. But I'll tell you though, I have to wonder when someone is over here doing this, but then they're trying to carry around a book that says we got to do this. I've got to ask if that person's kind of like the music student that won't practice or if that's, that's just like the sports, the, 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 the athlete that doesn't train very well, it doesn't 
isn't too serious about it. They say they want it, but they're not really into it. Like, not sure, fully decided on where they want to go. I, I kind of sort of have questions about that. Um, make up your mind and choose a path. What's this compulsion with trying to say you carry around the Bible? Make up your, whatever you do in your life, whatever you do in your life, make up your mind, get in or out. But my point is this. I want to come back to seeing romance as being about family, survival, children, and that God and Darwin are in agreement with that. And then if, if another thing too, God may be Darwin as, as another part of that, part of the support role, not the MVP, but the support role, um, being single can be a really great, wonderful thing. Why, why is it, why is it that, that, that people, and I, was, I grew up in a churchy church environment, like I said, and, and I didn't have a girlfriend and people started asking why. I'm like, what business of yours is that? What the heck? It's a, that's the other thing too. And with all these people on Sunday morning, they beat everybody up with the Bible all week long, but the Bible celebrates singleness. And I'm doing this thing that the Bible celebrates. And yet people, th these Bible people would think that there's something wrong with me while I'm doing what the Bible talks about. Re really, when, when we live in a contradiction like this, it makes life really, really difficult. Um, fertility rate. If we don't get this stuff sorted out, make up our minds as to where we want to be, we're at risk of going extinct. Now, last thing I want to talk about here is judging. That was a terrible D. I'm going to delete it because I don't like that. Thank you. I wrote my D correctly because there might be children watching. Judging, I'm going to draw this symbol and let you figure out what it means. That's a null set. That's not an anti-symbol because the line goes all the way through. See, for those of you math students, see the line comes up at the top like that? See, that means that it's null. This is no, and this is null, and I drew this one. Judging is God's business. That's, that's my shorthand symbol for God, a null set. When I'm writing, taking notes, I might write that for God. Judging is God's business, not yours. Um, we, you know, when, when someone else is doing, just, just speak the truth of your beliefs. I'll, 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 I'll explain. Explain your ideas. Understand others. I wrote the D two different ways for diversity. And make observations. But do not judge. Tell people what you see. Explain your own ideas. And when I do Bible, I don't try to make people believe in Bible. Someone asked me to, people ask me to teach them Bible. Would you please teach me Bible? Okay. And I just tell them what's in the Bible. I don't tell them to believe it. I don't ask people to believe Jesus. I, I do the journalist. In this book, it's that sentence which says this. 20 pages later, the same sentence appears. There's a connection. Okay, is it truth? No, it's in the pages. This is what it says. I just represent the Bible for what it says. Interestingly, a lot of people decide to become Christian reading it, but I don't ask for that. That's their decision. I don't, I don't do altar calls. Um, I don't know. One day I might do altar calls, but I, altar calls are weird. I think that, that God's the one, you know, maybe we'll put that up there. Altar calls. Altar calls are God's business. You know, altar caller in church, come down and get saved and believe Jesus today. You know, that's, that's an altar call. Maybe that's God's business and we shouldn't be doing that in church because it gets all emotional and then it makes us unstable. But explain your ideas, whatever, whatever it is. Your idea, the truth of what people say, understand other people's ideas. Someone wants to say something, hear what that person has to say. Summarize it back to them. Use, a few, use fewer words and, and just kind of sort of make sure that you're in the same zip code. Someone talks for 10 minutes. Uh, talk for 30 seconds and say, I, am I kind of 
understanding what you're sort of saying here? Am I picking up what you're putting down? and let it keep going. And then make observations, like I say. When when someone, when I see someone carrying a Bible around, but then wanting to have a same-sex relationship, I'm like, um, if, if, if we've got in the Bible, maybe you don't believe in Bible, fine, this is for you. I'm not, I'm not preaching, I'm just trying to educate, I'm just trying to explain here. If we've got Bible, uh, 51% of the Bible, at least 51%, say, I'm going to say greater than or equal to 51% that the Bible probably doesn't smile on same-sex relationships. You're not going to get anywhere in the Bible. Oh, it's great. Oh, that, that's the best thing ever. Uh, you're not going to get that reading the Bible. In order to get, in fact, pretty much the Bible is like, mm, that's not really wonderful. You know, when terrible things happen, uh, you know, in, anytime same-sex relationships are mentioned in the Bible, something not good is happening at the same time. And it kind of seems like there might sort of not, not be a connection. So, I, you know, people argue, no, the Bible doesn't condemn it. Okay, well, it doesn't smile on it. So why would you want to carry that book around if you want to have that? If, do, if you don't want that, then do something else. If, if, if you, this, and this is all about, uh, this is about orientation. Orientation questions. If you, if you, if, if you, if, if you like the, to have a, a strange view of orientation dis discussions and questions, um, why would you want to, why would you want to carry the Bible around? Put it down. That's fine. It's okay. It's okay. But make up, make up our minds. I'm just making an observation here. I, I, you know, someone that, that wants to live over here, but then also carry the Bible doing this orientation thing. That's, they want to smile on it. The Bible probably more than 50, more than 50% frowns on it and they want to carry this contradiction, I see someone that doesn't have their minds fully made up. Just saying. There's something there to sort out. If you're not, if you're not attracted to the opposite sex, then, or, or, you know, I'm attracted to the opposite sex. I just, I don't see a path that, that doesn't lead to disaster. I haven't met a woman that I don't think I would get divorced from very quickly. I don't want that. I, I love women. I just hate divorce. And I'll say this, I love women because I trained myself to. So let's talk about two other issues. Let's talk about conversion therapy. And then let's talk about longing. Conversion therapy, it cannot be forced. In fact, you know what? I don't like it at all. I don't believe in accountability groups to get out of porn addiction. I was addicted to porn when I was 15. I, I just, accountability always messed me up. You've got to be serious and you've got to make, it's like I was just talking about. You've got to make up your mind. Don't have, you know, don't have a teaching that frowns on something and then try to do that something that's frowned upon. They're different, but then try to live with them together. That's a living contradiction. Just choose one. Choose. Choose one. Choose here or choose here. Choose. But don't, don't be a living contradiction. And I had to ask myself, do I want to be controlled by porn and lust or not? And you, I had to be determined to stop it. So I, 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 don't, e I don't even like porn... Uh, Porn accountability. You know, it, you know, these people decide they don't want porn ruining their lives, so they'll have their friends ask them every day if they're doing porn. It's like, you're thinking about it more now than you were before. I don't believe in those groups. I don't, I don't buy it. Alcoholics Anonymous. I was talking with one of my friends. He's in the AA. Um, all right, if, if that helps you. But I, I said alcohol is not the disease. It's people drinking alcohol in order to escape from a problem. 
It's escapism that gives power to the alcoholism. So I really, it's not alcohol they're fighting. It's their escapism that they can never get away from. And so Alcoholics Anonymous maybe should be called the EA, Escapists Anonymous, because they're using substance to try to escape from something. That, that's a theory maybe. And my buddy in the AA, he goes, you know, that's really true. So, all right, okay, AA is AA, but you know, you've got to decide if you are serious about your life. You've got to decide if you really want you know, which side are you in? Make up your effing mind. F for fuzzy. Make up your fuzzy mind. What do you want to do? Don't be in a living contradiction. So I'm, you know, conversion therapy. No, I don't believe in that. I have, I like the choice model. I don't like that. Oh, I believe in the choice model. And I believe in the choice trains our behavior more than 0%. I don't believe conversion therapy. And as for people doing conversion therapy and having psychological problems, that's probably because it was either forced, like mom or dad said the kid has to or something, or the school said you have to, because we're Christian here, which means we force our morals on you. Right. We talked about that with judging. God is the judge. We're just the representatives of what we believe and know. And other people are representatives of what they believe and know. And our job is to listen. That's another Bible teaching. I just, I can't, I don't get why people have the Bible, but then they go judge. There's so much, so many people live in a contradiction. Conversion therapy fails if it's either forced or if it's compulsive. And I don't mean compulsory. I mean compulsive. Like, I feel I should, but you don't, you don't really want to. Um, conversion psychotherapy. I don't know too much about it. I don't get that. But I do believe that there is a, 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 a personal choice thing. I, so, I, I don't believe in these groups. I don't believe in a program. I don't believe in an institution trying to solve our problems. You know, people have said the Exodus movement, all these different were homosexuals and were Christian and were coming out of it. All of those failed. Do you know why? Because they were programs. They weren't all based on personal responsibility. It was all the church's fault to tell me who my friends are, the church's fault to make sure that I'm good at stuff. It was all the institutions and the group's fault to make sure that I behave. I'm going to be addicted to porn, so it's my friend's fault if he doesn't call me. It's someone else's. This is, this is blame shifting, trying, trying to get someone else to fix you. You've got to just decide which thing you want in your life, whatever it is, everywhere. Not just with orientation, but with judging others also, or with your career, what you want to do. Businesses have this problem. They're in the business of doing one thing, but then they start doing something totally different. That's what they accused Tony Stark of doing on Mad Money. Flashback, 2008. So, I, I've talked about, uh, I've talked about uh, conversion therapy, and I managed to draw a whole bunch of lines and stuff over it, so... Ugh. Longings. Last thing I'm going to say here. Longing. Remember what I said about how romance equals family. Um, if you watch your mind time, I don't, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, boy or girl, romantically drawn to man, woman, boy or girl. I don't care what, where you are in that permutation chart. If you're thinking about companionship, if you're boy crazy, you're girl crazy, whether you're boy or girl, I've got to wonder, I've got to wonder. See, this is romance is about family. And if romance is taking too much of your mind time, that's a terribly drawn brain. If romance is taking too much of your mind time, I would just naturally ask, just ask, are there some family challenges? Um, you know, 
if, if your girl crazy, did your mother die at an early age and you haven't come to peace with that? Or, or if your girl crazy, whether you're a boy or girl, did, did, did your, did your, um, was your mother kind of absent from the home or verbally or physically abusive or something? Or if you're boy crazy or you're longing for companionship with, with boys or men, you know, what, if, if it, then, you know, was your dad not at home a lot or did he kind of not have his life fully together in some ways that sort of bother you once in a while? I just got to ask. And it's just, you know, we've got to be at peace with ourselves. We all have stuff. We've, we've, we've all got stuff that we need to be at peace with. We need to be at peace with ourselves. We need to have peace with ourselves. If, if, in fact, I don't like that line. I want to keep it simple. This is it's all about being at peace with ourselves. If, if you can be at peace with yourself, not, not trying to, oh, that's another discussion, oh dear, trying to make, you know, I'm unhappy with myself. Okay, this happens, I, not me, but this happens. I'm unhappy with myself. I'm living in a contradiction. So inside I have all this turmoil building up because I haven't figured out which path I want to go down. I'm kind of doing this one and kind of doing that one, trying to have a foot in this canoe and another foot in that canoe. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Uh-huh. Well, how about you're not wrong, but you're going to be wet. You know, how about that? How about warning people? How about warning people saying, um, uh, I'm observing that, you know, uh, you might not fully be happy at the end of this. Just telling you what I observe. Uh, love you tons. Um, you know, uh, we're friends. Uh, we can work together if, if you do good work. Uh, we can we can play together if you play fair and, and we do a good job. Okay, we're cool. No discrimination, no bringing other issues into this discussion, but just observing. You've got a foot and you got one foot in two different canoes, and I'm not judging you, but I am saying you're going to be wet. I'm not going to say you're going to burn for having one foot in two different, each foot in a different canoe, but I am going to say you're going to get wet, and you might not want to, you know, because I care about you. And you got your phone in your pocket. You might, your phone might get fried if it gets wet. Just, just love you. Oh, boy. Some people, they don't want to hear that. They want to do what they want to do. And inside, there's this turmoil. And maybe they do get wet. And they don't want to be wet. So their solution is to force everybody by law to tell them, you're not wet. You're not wet. And they're dripping wet. You're not wet. You're not wet. Try, try to make other people talk a certain way or use certain words, forcing people to use uh, this manner of speech or something, like what you have to say. Trying to force everyone else to be their cheerleaders. They're unhappy inside, so they want the whole rest of the world to shout louder than their inner feelings. And I'm sorry to tell you, but that inner voice is never going to be louder than the whole world trying to shout it out. Everyone in the world shouting in unison is not going to out shout and drown out the voice within. If you're so unhappy that you've got to live life somehow or another with a contradiction of some kind, you've got a Bible in one hand, but you're beating people with it. Okay. All right. Uh, you go to church on Sunday morning, but you have kind of questions about that one single guy. What, they're single people in the Bible. You, you got your Bible. You want to have Bible, but I want to have a same-sex relationship. Well, that, that's not, you're not going to get that from the Bible. Go just get that someplace else. Get that someplace where you have that. Make up your mind. It's okay. It's cool. It's all right. If you're, if you're living with this, you've got this inner turmoil. The, the solution is to deal with the inner turmoil. But make peace with yourself somehow. Get choose a canoe. Change canoes. Be in this canoe and that this canoe and that canoe and another canoe. But but don't you know don't don't put one foot each in a different canoe. Choose choose a path. 
at least at any one time. I'm done.